What's your influence in the career that you're pursuing? My influence in the career that I'm pursuing is, you know, the career that I'm pursuing is basically to be a young black entrepreneur, but mainly my main focus is becoming a film director. And um, I already own a record label, got my record label, MOB Studios, MOB Records, MOB Film, MOB Everything. But I'm really focused on completing my career as a established film director. What you call it a director? I'm making movies, so I'm making movies for real, make real money, real money doing that. You know, music is, is, is selling, but it ain't selling. At a, at a pace that I need to sell it to, to match my lifestyle. So what I'm gonna do is like, you know, film. Straight up. Uh, my president, Donald Trump. Um, how do I feel about the president, or the president of the United States, you know? Um, I feel like Donald Trump, he doesn't really take it serious as he should. You know, and we got four years of that, or three more years of that, or whatever. But uh, if he could just back up a little off Twitter and get more into what's going on and kind of be equal about everything instead of seeing everything one-sided, you know, it'll be good. I like the fact that he's trying to expose what's been going down in the White House for some years, decades, whatever. But you know, besides all that, all that commercial ass shit, we really need to figure out what we gonna do, you know, as uh, a whole nation, you know what I'm saying, the United States as a whole nation, because the way how things are going right now is really not looking good. And that building all the wall and stuff, how can you build a wall of people that help build the country? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You build a wall against people that help build our country, you know what I'm saying? Can we find a, a different way to go about that matter? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? But like I said, he's the president or the face of the United States right now, so we just gotta go by what, you know what I'm saying? Whatever they got going on or whatever they put on TV, I really don't really pay too much attention because it really don't make no sense. But, you know, as far as politics goes, I feel like putting Trump in office is like the biggest scandal of all time in American history, <laughs> straight up. Do you prefer to be on a label or stay indie? I like indie because, you know, due to the fact that I'm out on iTunes right now, you know, for $10, I get majority of my $10. And that's that, that feels good to me, you know what I'm saying? Like, so if I get a set amount of downloads or streams or whatever, I'm still getting paid and I get a certain amount of money that the, that's majority of my money to me. You know, I withdraw. You dig what I'm saying? So I sign my checks, I sign myself. I, I like I like being independent. I'm gonna see where it takes me that I'm starting. I just started like two months ago. <laughs> and I'm gonna see where it takes me. I really started this label like established the label like two months ago. Um and I had this the whole idea for like a couple of years now but I just started putting it into play and I'm just gonna see where it takes me. But as far as being independent, yeah I like it. You know, I'm getting all my money, all my show money, you know what I'm saying? I'm going on tour, I got a tour coming up, I'm going to New York, I'm performing at like three clubs so far right now, you know what I'm saying? You know when you touch down it might be like eight more joints. <laughs> We got like three videos I'm shooting in Harlem with my nigga. Shout out to Yordi, shout out to T-Rex from Harlem. And um, yeah, I like being independent. I mean, I'm getting more independent. I don't need to be controlled. I don't need to be a puppet. I don't, I'm not looking for no handouts. No, I don't want no handouts. I'm doing everything on my own. Me and my team, we working as a machine. We doing everything on our own. We not paying nobody to consult nothing for us. And we consult everything. If nothing can't get consulted, all right, well, fuck you. We don't got to do business with you. You understand what I'm saying? That's how we rocking the MLB record. But if it can be consulted and the price can be negotiated, or we could bar the businesses or trade associations, I'm all for it. You know what I'm saying? And I'm all with it. Who's an iconic rapper to you? An iconic rapper to me has to be of my time, I would say Tupac, 
But of my time coming up, I gotta say 50 Cent because 50 Cent actually made money. Like real money. You understand what I'm saying? So, um, Tupac, great acting, whatever, but he also got 50 Cent. It's a great actor. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and now he took over stars with the Power show. You know, that. So, of my time right now, this generation, that everybody alive that's watching this tape could really understand, I would say Tupac, but I have to go with 50 Cent from the deals that he brokered, from the, um, the, the situations that he took to TV and made, like his reality, you know what I'm saying, made a million. So I have to, uh, I have to choose him, you know what I'm saying? I have to say 50 Cent, I have to say 50 Cent. What do you think about industry rap beef? Industry rap beef? It's very funny to me. Like, prime example, the, the, the Soldier Boy and Chris Brown beat. How y'all beefing and booking events and y'all not don't even stay less than eight minutes away from each other? You know what I'm saying? That was very funny to me. That rap beef, music beef, industry beef. I feel like, uh, you know, if it's beef, it should be um, handled a different way or, you know, sometimes it's not even that serious. So. You know, probably they should keep it on wax and then don't even adjust anything about a fight. You know what I'm saying? Don't even say any physical or anything. Just keep it on wax and show your talent if you want to, you know, keep it as rap beef. But beef and rap beef is two different things. Can rap beef escalate to beef? Yes. By dealing with certain people a certain way. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody not going to take certain songs and dishes in certain ways you talk to them, you know what I'm saying? So beef and rap beef or rap beef, how do I feel about it? I feel like it's lame. But if they want to fat uh, you know freestyle battle or battle or you know record for record, I feel like it's cool like what Nicki Minaj or uh, Remy is doing. I feel like that's good. Com oh, that's very competitive, you know what I'm saying? Even though Remy is winning that right now, but I feel like that's very competitive. But I feel like I would not count Nikki out. I feel like she could come back with a great record because I rate her as a lyricist as well. Too. What would be one of your dream venues to perform in? One of my dream venues to perform in would have to be uh, Overpack Sunday night at Club Live. And I'm like, I just finished drinking a whole bottle of Bel Air. And I'm gone. <laughs> I'm on stage and they let me perform uh, one of my latest hits or one of my latest songs at the time. Probably, probably I got this song called The Latest. Probably let me perform The Latest and I'm gone. <laughs> Have you ever been to Club Live? Um, I've been to Club Live um, one time in my whole life and it was a, it was a great experience. But I never performed. Man. I would love to just get on the stage. During the time that you went, was there a performance there? During the time I went, there was a game performed there, and that was before he had the beef with Meek Mills. He was just there, and he did a a, a performance at Club Lil. How was the How was the energy? Electrifying. Anytime artists is perform, it gets electrifying because all the phones and the lights come out. It look like they're aliens from Mars. So it's like. The most electrifying, the most electrifying performance I ever seen in my life is Future performing at Cafe Iguana. But you can really feel the energy, is what I'm saying. You dig what I'm saying? But Gang, Gang had an electrifying performance. It was, that was the atmosphere. Would Cafe Iguanas be one of the venues you would also like to perform at too? Oh, Cafe Iguana! Shout out to the Cafe Iguana girls. That's my people's though. That's love, that's family. Like, whatever they want to put me, they know they can call me. And I'm at all their major events, VIP'd up, hella bottles. They already know Richard Point in the building. So, like, we, we follow each other on our IG and um, Snapchat. So, like, whenever they want to put me or whatever. I did a show at Cafe Guanas, actually, sorry. I opened up for Lucci, Lucci, YFN Lucci. 
I opened up for Lucci. I opened up the whole show, and then everybody else came on. I thought I was the only one opening up, but shit, you know, shit, everybody else get that cake, you know what I'm saying, get that bag. But I opened up for Lucci and um, um, Ball Greasy came in, and by the time I was getting off stage, I dapped up Ball Greasy, and I was it. I seen Jack in the building, shout out to Jack, Jack doing his thing too in Brown right now. I think he got the record, um, a mixtape out called Patron and I, um, Orange Juice. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And um, yeah, shout out to Jack. But Jack was in the building and uh, his with his girl. Um, and then um, I left and then I got the ball breezy and I left. And then I think Lucci never went on stage. Lucci um, had um, leg problems uh, at the time because he had gotten this accident or whatever. But I, I did a performance out there. Yeah, I, I fuck with Cafe Barbers. Like, that's my, like, that's the number one spot uptown right now. Like, that's the number one spot uptown. I fuck with Cafe 100. Shout out to the Cafe 100 girls again. I love you. <laughs> Where is one of your most influenced spots that you make your music at? Uh, MLB Studios. Um, it's, it's basically my little spot to get away from all the madness that's, that, that goes on in Miami on a day to day basis. A lot of shit that goes on don't even make the news. People don't even know that. You know what I'm saying? It just turns into investigation. And shit turned cold case, you know what I'm saying? We lost a lot of people just, you know what I'm saying, the past week. R.I.P. Chiller, you know what I'm saying? Um, but, um, yeah, I just want to know the silence with Chiller real quick, but R.I.P. Chiller. And, um, yeah, people don't understand, like, Miami is a day to day. Thing, you know, you gotta just take it day to day. And one of my spots where I get away to record at is MOB Studios, you know, and I really get a chance to drink, vibe, smoke, and get, get right. And I get the whole rundown, the interview, photo shoot, whatever I want to do. Now. Cause we 